Hello everybody, hola, namaste and welcome to my channel as always. Today I was feeling pretty happy so I decided to show a very nice Mikhail Tal game. Uh, his opponent was none other than Antoli Karpov, the 12th world champion. This game was a blitz game. It was played in 1987, the year I was born actually, <laughs> in uh, Brussels. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Let's, let's see what happens. So Tal had the white pieces and he opened with e4. And Karpov replied with c6. Karpov plans to go for uh, the Karo Khan. Uh, c4, d5, the Karo Khan is on the board. Tal takes, Karpov takes, c captures on d5. And knight to f6, pressuring the pawn on d5. So Tal develops his knight very nicely to c3. And Karpov captures, and Tal develops his other knight to f3. Uh, we have captures. Tal takes back with the b pawn, which is a very uh, standard move. You want to develop, uh, you want to capture towards the center always. And uh, g6 with the idea of fianketoing this dark squid bishop on the nice g7 square, so it can have some uh, influence along this diagonal. So Tal pushes d4, bishop comes to g7, bishop d3, Tal, uh, Karpov castles, Tal castles, and we have knight to c6, and rook to uh, e1. And in this position, uh, Karpov played uh, rook uh, to e8 with the idea of uh, pushing this pawn further and trying to challenge uh, the strong center which Tal has made for himself. But here Tal played bishop g5, which is, uh, which is actually uh, pretty pretty dangerous because now as you can see this uh, e7 pawn cannot really be pushed because the queen is uh, the pawn is pinned to the queen if you push the pawn you lose the queen to the bishop so the queen will have to move to maybe d6 or d7 or c7 before the pawn can be pushed and here uh, Karpov uh, played uh, bishop to e6 which is a, a very anti-positional move actually because now this bishop pro uh, it, it actually prevents your own pawn from being being pushed so usually the principles of chess say that you should first push your pawns and then you know try to develop your bishop so i did i did not understand the the reason behind this but i'm sure if karpov played it there must have been some reason behind it so in case you guys know about it please leave it in the comment section i'll really love to uh, know what the purpose of this move was so uh, in typical tal fashion tal <laughs> captured on e6 and pawn captures and now the bishop goes to c4, eyeing the weak e6 pawn. So the queen has to come to d6 to defend the pawn. And queen to e2, again, adding one more attacker on that weak e6 pawn. So now the knight has to jump back. Again, This now this game has become entirely about this weak pawn. And it's it's this is actually a double pawn, you know. So it's, it's going to be very, uh, very, very difficult for black to actually defend this position. So Tal brings his other rook into the game. And we have uh, rook to c8 now pressuring the c4 bishop. So the knight comes back adding defense to the bishop. Now the knight will probably jump uh, to e4 pressuring the queen. And from there on it will start uh, attacking the king side. So the king moves and we have knight to e4 as I said. Queen goes to c7. Now there's a double attack on this bishop. So the bishop will drop back to b3. And finally uh, Karpov removed his weakness on e6 by pushing e5. And Tal pushes h4 with the idea that uh, he doesn't have uh, too many pieces attacking the king side as of now. So the best move in this position probably would be to start pushing this pawn. So Karpov captures and Tal ignores and pushes pushes h5. Now the idea is he'll uh, he can capture either on g6 or he can even push h6. And after the bishop moves, he'll get this diagonal for his own bishop and also maybe the queen at some point to attack the black king. So in this position, uh, Karpov captured on h5, which allowed uh, Mikhail Tal to uh, put his queen on h5. But the, there was actually a better move in this position. He could have played knight to f6. Now this knight cannot be captured. If you capture with the pawn, then you lose the rook because the rook is undefended. Because the knight is uh, sandwiched between the two rooks. So that would not have been possible. So after this, you're pressuring uh, the, the uh, h7 pawn and... Even if bishop captures, for example, uh, this comes with check. If you capture again, queen captures. So this would be completely lost for black. Uh, but anyways, in this position, uh, Tal played queen to h5. Now again, this uh, sandwiched knight is preventing the rook from being defended. So the rook has to move. And bishop comes back. Now the idea is very simple. Tal wants to play the knight to f6 and then uh, give a checkmate on h7. So the queen comes uh, to... Uh, e5 and Tal again plays a wonderful move he offers his entire rook uh, with the idea that if queen captures then the threat of checkmate on h7 still looms 
But Karpov said, okay, fine, I'll capture the rook. So he captured the rook with check. King goes to h2. And here, actually, uh, Karpov had a chance to uh, to uh, equalize the game or rather, you know, uh, defend it properly. He should have played bishop uh, h6 with the idea of giving up the bishop. Sorry, my bad. Uh, giving up the bishop and then bringing the rook to f7. And this is actually good for... Uh, good for black as you can see white doesn't have rooks yes he has the initiative but once the knight comes into the game once the rooks get connected this would have been in fact much better for black uh, and maybe white would even have to, had to force a draw in this position but this did not happen in fact uh, Karpov blundered the game here he played uh, at six and now it was just a capture fest so Tal captured king has to move of course you cannot capture here because this is going to be checkmate so that would not be possible so uh, Karpa moved the king, but then Tal just played the simple uh, uh, bishop captures on g7. Again, you cannot capture because of the same threat. Check, check, checkmate. That's not possible. So uh, Karpov captured with the rook on f2, but here just uh, queen at 7 check. King moves, queen comes back and checks. Again, the king has to go back. And after this position, uh, this check, in fact, uh, Karpov resigned the game because next move the king has only one square to go and this is going to be checkmate. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it was a nice miniature and a very nice uh, game by Tal, typical Tal fashion. So yeah, see you next time. Cheers.